Hi, this is Ravi Tangri. Our, we had some technical difficulties. Our broadcast got shut off just as we got rolling. Um, and no, Martin, I don't think that was shutting you off at all. Uh, I'm Ravi <laughs> Tangri, and I'm here with my dear friend in Austria, Martin Leshgolnik. And we are going to explore today the this whole issue of the law of attraction, the secret, the power of intention. There's so much that's been said about it, so much that uh, people are talking about it. And what we want to get into is, f first of all, what is it? What's the hype? What are the concerns? And then let's really get a look at it and see, you know, what, what the issues are. So, Martin, you want to touch base on that a little bit? Oh, yes. Okay. Where do we start? Uh, well, there has been a lot of hype about this. And uh, there are some, uh, let's call it strong proponents of the secret and its message, which, which is kind of, actually, the law of attraction has been around for a long, long time. So it's just that Absolutely. with the secret, it just got this hype. Uh, and also quite some misconception, I would say. Uh, so it's, it's, it's totally enough. You sit on your sofa, visualize the Mercedes, and wait until it stands in front of your door. Um, well, yeah, maybe. <laughs> that, that's, that's, the, that's the big thing. But um, so I think, I think there are two, two base questions. So the law of attraction says that what you focus on is happening in your life. So, and I would I would expand this to say okay what is in resonance with you is happening in your life and there are several aspects that we can look at it and one is I mean one is clearly the metaphysical if, if you're not to say the spiritual side of it which is which is um, probably where where some of the bad rap comes from because people say oh that's just woo woo and wish fulfilling thinking and and, and stuff like that. However, uh, there are also some very basic psychological uh, considerations that we have to uh, we have to make. Um, so we all know about the phenomenon of of selective perception, right? So that the classic the classic examples: uh, you are you or your 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 partner gets pregnant, and suddenly you see pregnant women all over. Or you buy this new car, and suddenly half the town drives the same model. Uh, so why is that? Has there been a fertility boom, or has there been a sales record for the cars? No, it hasn't. They were always around. This has to do with something in our brain that's called a reticular activating system. And the, the RAS, not to be mistaken with the IRS, that, that's something totally else. Yeah, let's stay yeah, clear of that. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the reticular activating system basically is kind of like a, a, a secretary general in your brain. So he, that portion of the brain, is, is uh, its job is to decide what is really important for you right now. So each moment you get all the impulses from all the nerves, from all the cells of your body uh, into your brain, and the reticular activating system tells you which one to process consciously and which one not. So if I say, okay, how does your big left toe feel? So if it hasn't been hurting, then you were probably not aware of what was going on. So now you say, okay, it's in my shoe, it's hot, it's cold, it's sweaty or whatever. It's, it's right now we have, I don't know, 120 degrees outside and it's really, I uh, don't want to smell it, whatever. Yeah. But there has been a, a, a nerve sensation coming to your brain constantly and it has been blocked out because it wasn't relevant. And the same is true, that's the basis of the selective perception. The same is true for your visual perception, for what you hear. And once the, the, the factor of attention is on a certain subject, on a certain topic, suddenly you hear more and you see more of this in your environment. Why? Because the reticular activating system has been trained to follow on this. So does this reticular activating system act as your wish fulfilling agent. So I want something, that's why my reticular activating system is bringing it to me. No, there are two ways how to program this. One is either by very strong emotional imprint or the second is by repetition, 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 repetition. So here we come into the whole area of, of habitual thoughts, um, which I, in, in my opinion, in, in my 
understanding of, of psychology, uh, there is a lot of the law of attraction, so so-called law of attraction coming from, because we are so habitually tuned into one direction that we blend out all the other stuff that is not there. And when we then suddenly change this and recreate the, the scope of perception that we have, then suddenly, whoa, magic. The thing that I was focusing on just appears magically in my life. Mm -hmm. That is a form of the law of attraction, of course. It is a very simple psychological principle. And then so there are even others. if you don't believe in things outside of you, that those principles which are supported by psychology actually support the process. That is what I mean. Law of attraction, we really have to distinguish what it is. And so what many people say is, oh, you focus on something and then it shows up in your life. Yes, of course. I mean, that's a regular, normal psychological process. Uh, this is our reticular activating system at work. So that's perfectly normal. However, then there are other occurrences um, that are of more of a mystical nature or, or of a more inexplainable nature. Like uh, I had several of these occurrences in my life where suddenly out of the blue, literally, um, something happened. And if I go back to my education in Buddhism, uh, a lot of the talk about the law, the law of cause and effect ties in here, what is also called karma. Yeah. So if the, the literal translation of karma would be cause and effect, you, we create a cause and there will be an effect. So if, if, I, if, I, if I push my, my cup over, then something will spill out if something was in there. So that's yeah. cause and effect. That's very, very logical. And that has also been a means to explain some of the more mysterious uh, happenings in our lives. So it's, it's in the basis of human nature to want to make sense of life. Uh, because monkey mind wants to retain control and we want to think that actually, okay, we, we got a grip on this. So we try to come up with models to explain how this happens. And that one model could be there is an angry God and we have to please him so that he keeps our harvest safe. And, and so this, this is the, the, the uh, theory of early man in, in the, in the Palatian or, the, or in the stone ages and so on. Yeah. What we know from, from comparative relig religious studies. Uh, then there is the, the approach of karma in Buddhism saying, okay, because something that happens to you has a cause uh, which is related to you as well. And then we have the more normal atheistic uh, approach, or that's more normal in our sense in our society, uh, that says, okay, it happens by accident or coincidence. And there I really like the, the explanation that Joe Dispenza gives. He says, one is an incidence, two is a coincidence, three is a series. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I, I love that. That's like a coincidence. Right. Okay. Yeah. So there, there are many different aspects that we can talk about. And then there is the metaphysical uh, side of it, for which I can give numerous examples. Right. And, and, and still, uh, then we have to look at why is it not working? Why is somebody doing everything that's in the book and it's still not having the result that they want? Right. They're doing the visualizing, they're doing the affirmation, they're doing all that what they should be doing. And still their dream partner is not there, their, their dream job is not there, the car that they want to have is not there, etc. It really sucks when that happens. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so the interesting thing now, uh, Martin, is... Uh, you, you'd mentioned along the way uh, that there's two things, the repetition and emotional uh, yes. in, involvement. And the way uh, that I understand it is that really it's got to be both. You have to have a very clear picture, which the repetition helps, and strong emotion. doesn't matter what the emotion is. Um, and also, yeah. I should just mention, hey, David, how are you? Good to see you on there. Uh, if any of our viewers have comments, questions, insights, Please add them. We will be coming coming to that. But with this uh, thing, that it comes back to that there are three levels of mind, okay? And this was by Jung, by many others. They talk about your conscious mind, your unconscious mind, or sometimes called subconscious, or your superconscious mind, three yeah. levels. 
we think we are our conscious mind and, and the thoughts that we think. And a lot of people get so lost in their thoughts, like yeah. blah, 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 head chatter. They think that's who they are. That's not at all. Your conscious mind is seven chunks of information, plus or minus two. That's it. That's why um, that's what your reticular activating system brings attention to, so that those seven chunks include that, whether it's your big toe or some car you bought or whatever, right? Exactly. That's why phone numbers were seven digits in America, at least. I'm not sure about Europe. Ah, okay. And, Didn't know that. Uh, yeah, in North America, they were, they were they're seven digits. So the the thing is, your most of what we do is run by your unconscious mind. And yes. that is like a five-year-old kid. It's big eyes. It sees everything. The reticular activation system doesn't filter that stuff out for it. But right. to imprint on that, you need um, a very clear picture infused with emotion. And that's how you program it. So well, a lot of the thoughts that we actually have in our conscious are these tapes that are playing from yeah. your unconscious. They're not yeah. actual the thoughts. You need the you need the emotion and the repetition if you want to affect the change fast, right? Because you, law of attraction is working all the time, if in a sense, because you're perpetuating it all the time anyway. So if you're right. happy with what you're getting in your life, uh, why bother? Don't do anything. It's already working out. But if and you want to change, the principle. then then you have to you have to apply those. And and my my favorite example of this is. I ask this in my talks all the time. On um, when you heard first about 9/11, where were you? And uh, I would say, yeah, you know it. Yeah, I would say 99% of my my audience members know it. And yeah. if I say, okay, where were you three weeks later? People usually have no clue. Yeah. So that's that's the power of an emotional imprint. That's right. It, this is straight burned into our long-term memory, and it's there. And the interesting thing is, what happened that day, no matter where you were, you started watching the TV, and you saw those videos over and over and over. So you actually, we were, as a, as a world, installing a trauma into us, uh, in a way. And Because you were in America. Well, yes, in North America, yeah. Um, now, the thing is... The, the your unconscious mind runs everything right your body your temperature everything that's there and most of your behaviors because how many times do you react to someone and go why did i do that because it's a conditioned behavior it's learned by your unconscious <laughs> and imprinted by repetition and emotional infusion and then here's where some people have difficulty with what the law of attraction says the only connection to the super conscious mind which is the broader intelligence of the universe, the consciousness of the universe, is through is through your unconscious. Your conscious mind can't communicate with it. So the only way to communicate with the superconscious about what you want is by imprinting it on your unconscious. So that this is the principle, I believe, of the the law of attraction, that by making a very clear picture, infusing it with emotion. Uh, you are programming it into your subconscious, which then communicates with your superconscious saying, this is where I want to be. And it starts bringing those uh, uh, interesting little coincidences to yeah. you. Um, I, I call, I compare that always to a rowboat. That we sit in a rowboat and we have yes. the two, two oars of our consciousness and we are rowing. So we think. But meanwhile, there is a 200 horsepower uh, engine at the back of the robot pushing 24 seven full speed. <laughs> That's our subconscious. Yeah. So now you try with those two oars to row against that. Uh, good luck with that. Right. Yeah. Uh, and, and your unconscious once, is the motor. Exactly. Totally. It's, it's, and it's, and it's 24 seven, it's pulling or pushing all the time. Right. So right. once we realize that we can use those two oars of our conscious, to set the direction where the subconscious pushes us, then suddenly things get effortless. Right. Well, it's about happen. changing the motor, the direction of the motor. It's changing the direction of the boat. The motor will push anyway. Yeah. And it does. And, and if and and so I do. I do an exercise in my seminars with people. It's called the association exercise. 
So they give them like 10 different terms, like work is, love is, family is, wealth is, money is, whatever. Yeah, There's 10, 10 things like this that sort of cover the, the most basic uh, areas of life. And they say, okay, uh, you've got three minutes time, find to each of the 10 words, three words that describe that for you. What does that stand for you? Yeah, love, uh, uh, work is uh, tedious, boring, and uh, terrifying. Or mm. is it inspiring, engaging, and full of wonder? So what is it? Uh, not, don't think about it, don't rationalize. It's, it's not about pleasing somebody to, by saying the right thing, but say what, what comes up first. That's why the time is so short, because you have to just react, react, react. Yeah, so that the subconscious, that there's no time for rationalization, but the, from the subconscious can up, what do I really connect with this? And right. then I say to the people that when you now look at this paper, you most likely have a 99% correct blueprint of your life. That is what, how your life looks like at the moment. And if you're not happy with that, we better make some changes. <laughs> yeah. So, and then, then ask yourself, and the thing is, it's again, not about the thinking. It's about changing the, the unconscious habits, the, the concepts that are ingrained in your, in your being. Yeah. And then suddenly the, the subconscious can push you to where you want to go. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so now the, the, before we get into the, 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 you know, the, the, does it work and how it works? What, what I think we need to spend a bit of time on is, you know, what are the criticisms of the law of attraction? What is it that people say that, uh, and thank you, Wanda, for, for, for that. I, I appreciate that this is working for you. Drop on any questions that you have. So what are the criticisms that people have? Why is it that people poo-poo um, the, 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 the law of attraction and say that it's, it's a bunch of uh, hocus-pocus, whatever? So, so let's, let's really get clear about what the arguments are. Okay. How much time do I have? <laughs> <laughs> now, let's just hit the there, high points. There, there, are, there, are several, there are several aspects to, to go into that direction. Uh, so I think one is the very uh, Puritan uh, layout of society in, in our Western countries. So which is you have to work hard, you have to strive hard, you have to please God. Yeah? So this is the original from the original pilgrims that came to the United States and Canada because uh, they were not liked so much in, in good old Europe. But the same in the Northern European countries or Protestant countries, you have to really work hard. So now somebody comes where you don't have to work hard, uh, just relax back, focus on what you want, visualize it and it will happen. Hmm. This goes against any conditioning or any societal norm that you have been brought up with for, I don't know how many hundred years. So obviously that there are some people uh, who, say, who say that, how can this be? Yeah. The other point is, uh, some people say, okay, there's no scientific proof for this. And sure not, yes, we cannot prove it. But it it's the same as if you said, okay, there's no God. Okay, we cannot prove God. Yeah? And at least not in a, uh, there, there's a whole philosophical topic on that one. But uh, so that's the second thing that there's no scientific proof of this. Um, yeah. And thirdly that, oh, well, if something good happens, it's coincidence. So, and, of course, as, as in Buddhism, when we talk about enlightenment, uh, I cannot give enlightenment to you. It's only an experience that you can make yourself. And I can only describe how it felt to me, but it's not, not necessarily the same experience for you. So yeah. it's a highly individual uh, realization, a highly individual experience. Uh, and that's why it's so difficult to, to convey the critics. So what we mostly have for it is... Um, I call it, uh, um, nah, it's, it's factual evidence. It's like, no, it's not, it's like case, case based evidence. People yeah. make experiences, and, and then, of course, some of it is simply to explain with the reticular activating system at work. So that's yeah. a simple psychological phenomenon. There's nothing metaphysical about it. Right, uh, right. So there are, there are many, many aspects that one can go into. And uh, then, on the other hand, there are many people who said, Oh, well, I've tried all this. I did the visualization. I, I did the affirmation. I bought a t-shirt and or the audio course or whatever, and it didn't work. 
Yeah. Now, the, yeah. the other thing yeah. is, too, you've got you've to got understand, understand how this how works, works in, in terms, terms of, of uh, are you, are you approaching, approaching it from scientifically it? or are you approaching it from uh, a, a point of view of, um, are, are you approaching it from the point of view of a human being? Like whose whose perception of reality is being threatened? Okay, mm. and and I think to to really get where this is coming from, you 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 got to take a look back at history. I mean, th the things uh, we have had a number of things over history that have shaped our society, shaped the way we think. Uh, you know, you've heard probably of the phrase "I think, therefore I am." They kind of, that that we think, therefore we are, versus. We're not human thinkings, we're not human doings, we're human beings, right? Exactly. Uh, but our whole society has been on a left brain determinant, deterministic thrust that we control everything, Newton's apple falling, right? And that, that it can be absolutely measured. The, the thing is though, that, that in recent years, uh, things like quantum physics, and as you know, my background, I, my first uh, career is, is as a nuclear physicist. Um, quantum physics turned everything inside out. Everything that you learned about in high school about physics, forget it, put it aside. It's, I mean, yes, it is true for, for most interactions, but it, but it is a, a generalization in, in a specific area. The, the interesting thing once you bring in quantum physics that is that our beliefs, uh, in fact, the, just the very fact of observing something changes reality. So, for example, there everything that we are made up of, every particle that w makes you up, that makes me up, uh, if you go down into sub subatomic particles, you get down to what we call virtual particles. And these are particles that don't exist, but everything acts as if they exist. And if you look for them and if you run the experiments, they will appear while you're looking for them. Then when you stop oh. looking for them, they'll disappear, right? Exactly. You sort of brain fart. Um, so this is the way reality works. And a lot of people say that uh, the, um, uh, the sh say that, uh, yeah, that's fine. It's, it's in the quantum level. But does it work in reality? Well, there's a lot of data, if you're willing to see, that actually shows it. And the real scientist will not debunk a theory. I mean, look at how, how look at our history to see how much we have uh, debunked stuff just because we're scared of it. The earth was supposed to be flat. We were supposed to be the center of the universe or the center of the solar system, not the sun. All of this stuff, you know, the, the church uh, basically cast out Galileo and it took hundreds of years for them to forgive him for saying that the, the earth was not at the center of the, the solar system and, and such, right? Um, exactly. Because people were afraid of the reality being uh, shifted. Now, there's if you're willing to, science, a true scientist will say, I don't know, let's experiment and try and see if we can produce the same results, right? And so, for example, people say that these effects of things happening based on your belief or your observation, they only happen at the quantum level. Wrong. There's lots of research that happens uh, in, in real life that actually validates that if you're willing to, to look at it. That's published in actual uh, peer-reviewed scientific journals. There's this, uh, a study that, that was uh, published in 97 by Richard Wiseman and Marilyn Schultz on the effects of the remote detection of staring. They, this is where, you know that feeling where you just feel like someone's watching you, right? And... Marilyn, uh, I believe she's from UK, she did this experiment there. And what she did is she put a person in a room and they just left that person sitting in the room. In another room, she had someone else watching a, a, a TV screen. And the TV screen showed different, um, uh, different scenes. And every once in a while, it showed, it. there was a camera on the first person who was just sitting in a room and it showed that person sitting in the room. Now, the person in the room was uh, wired up for the galvanic skin responses, and every time someone was watching him, 
something shifted in his skin responses. Mm. Okay, so she did that experiment. Then this guy in, I believe in America, Richard Wiseman said, oh, that's a bunch of hooey. That's nonsense. <laughs> uh, so he did the same experiment and he found there was no correlation. Okay, he found zero correlation, but he was smart enough to realize there was one variable and that was the belief of the experimenter. So what he did was he got together with Schultz and they used the same lab, the same random sample of, of uh, people, oh, of, of subjects. Every time Marilyn Schultz did the experiment, there was a correlation. Every time Wiseman did it, there wasn't. Oh, interesting. Now, if you think about it, that blows science, all scientific method out of the water. Think about how terrifying that is for a scientist who's objective, who's rational, who's logical. You know, uh, being a scientist does not mean just being rational. You've got to be open to abstract. I mean, when I was working in quantum physics, we were working with... Um, calculus with fractional dimensions, with infinite dimensions. You cannot even perceive that in the brain. You have to feel it, right? You, 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 it's not concrete. And, and, and the core principle in quantum physics is uncertainty. You can't know everything. I, it, it totally puts a new, new light on the term subconscious bias. Yes, absolutely. It, it totally does. Uh, so this is an effect in the real world of belief shifting the results. And it's a scientifically proven effect. Another thing is, you know that if you have a heart attack, it's, it's good to take aspirin, right? Or they say, take aspirin right away, it'll help you. Or some people take aspirin every day, right? The interesting thing is, there is no single study that shows that the what it was was they found that um a, the the um the the reason that happened is someone did what's called a meta study they took 25 separate studies of uh, effects of aspirin 80 percent of which said there was no effect but when they put all the results together they found a 20% of the data correlated and showed that it was beneficial. Mm. And because of that, we have changed our society. So people who have, you know, who have high risk of heart attack take aspirin every day because of a minuscule uh, indicator in a meta study of 25 separate studies. Yes. There are, you know, the thing is, there are studies on, um, uh, the effects of prayer, of healing, that show better results. And yet doctors poo-poo that because it is something beyond what they can perceive. Yeah. Right? And and, and that's why I love I love the work that Joe Dispenza does. Because he's, he's putting on those, those seminars where people do uh, meditative exercises. Yes. Uh, just like calming the breath and, and guided meditations that he leads and so on. And then they do at the same time they do all the brain scans observing what is actually happening in their brains of people what is the how what frequency they are in etc cetera, etc cetera. and so they very clearly show that if people do that for just a certain while uh, and and they are they're getting into this they are changing literally the frequency of of their brain waves but they're also changing their hormonal system in the body um, so uh, the our the state of our mind of our conscious beliefs of our subconscious beliefs much more importantly uh, is so determining for a what's happening with our body and b what we perceive with the outside in the outside world and even if you if you totally disregard uh, anything that goes into the what you would maybe consider woo woo or or metaphysical or whatever but if you check <laughs> quantum physics. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sure for many people that's just that. Yeah. And but if you go back to the very simple principles of selective perception and habits, you can already do a lot of positive change in your life there. Mm -hmm. And then if you if you dive deeper and, and and get a grasp of what what 
practical application of quantum physics in your life actually means uh, that the observer actually determines the outcome of what's happening there. Yeah. And that, but it's not, it's not the, the conscious observer, as you just said, our conscious mind can just hold a tiny fraction of, of different pieces of information at a time. But it's the subconscious bias that we bring to things. What is, what is the subconscious pattern that is reflecting? That's why I think it's not working for so many people. Because yeah. they, they have some some reflux, they have some some uh, some cutback from from a uh, unconscious habitual thought, and that is actually bringing them more of the same old instead of changing the direction of where they want to go. Well, the interesting thing is, if you apply the principles of the law of attraction, what you believe is what you create, right? So if you believe with strong emotion that this is BS. That's what you're going to put out, and those are the that's the, what the reality you're going to create. Yeah, uh, which which is an irony in in a way. Yeah, you know, I I did once a uh, an online program in German uh, on uh, helping the law of attraction attraction with uh, EFT with the tapping with the meridian tapping. Yeah, and uh, because what we have we don't predominantly we don't have to change the conscious mind. That one is, um, sorry for all the brainies out there, highly irrelevant. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I can't, yeah, I, I'm, I'm a thinker. I'm a thinker myself. I like to rationalize. I like to have the, the abstracts and the facts and the figures and all that. But I've come to realize in my own life, it's actually pretty useless. Yep. yep. It is. And because your subconscious mind runs the show. And when your subconscious five-year-old says this is not safe, it will sabotage any and all of your efforts to to uh, to go in that direction. Yeah. Now the the other thing though here that this brings up that I think we should touch on is there's consciousness that we have a consciousness individually, right? But implicit in this um, is. Uh, that there is a con broader, higher consciousness, whatever you want to call it. Okay, I don't want to get into religious okay. names, whatever. Uh, you know, you could call it God, you could call it universe, call it Harry. I don't care. One, one of my one of my teachers calls it the mystery. Right. So the is there evidence for that? Again, I go back to I'm a scientist. Okay, I go back to is there evidence that there's that there's a broader uh, consciousness at work now? We're only touching on stuff here. One of the things I highly recommend to people who are watching this, if you really want to discover all of the science that, that that's behind this and from all sorts of fields, not just quantum physics, but from uh, genetics, biology, all sorts of things. There's a book by uh, Irvin Laszlo called Science and the Akashic Field, A-K-A-S-H-I-C, Science and the Akashic Field. And what he talks about is that we have, uh, um, you know, in, in the universe, there's an electromagnetic field, there's, um, there's gravitational fields, all this, but there's also an information field. And that this, this is how we communicate with things. Now, it, let's go to the science of this now first. The, the, one of the things that, that we have found in quantum physics is that if you take two particles and bring them together so that they interact, you can take them a universe away and you change one of them, the other one will uh, respond. Okay. Now, so it doesn't matter how far away and it's instantaneous. So there is a connection. The other thing to realize is that um, there's, uh, you know, the, the way the universe is formed, which our understanding right now is still that there was originally one concentrated everything and then the Big Bang, that everything exploded. So we were all connected. The interesting thing, if you go, this is where your mind kind of blows a little bit. If you read Erin Laszlo's book, and if you read other science, now they, they've, they're switching to say, instead of the Big Bang, it's the big bounce that we've exploded, contracted, exploded. And there's actually this Akashic field, it's information field permeates, through all of those so that we can get echoes of past universes that have formed, so past things that have happened. 
but in another i this is another thing that i found that that really makes you realize there is something going on here in terms of consciousness there's at princeton university there's a project called the Go global consciousness project where they have 38 devices all around the world called eggs and these are random number generators they continuously generate you know random numbers like crazy there should be zero pattern they're like an eeg for the world okay um and what they're exploring is is there a global consciousness and such interesting thing is on september 11th when the, which we talked about earlier when the planes hit the all of a sudden there was a huge shift all of a sudden these random number generators uh started uh deviating from random behavior and started producing correlated numbers this started uh about um just before the first crash and continued for about two days after and then on september 14th there were many calls around the world for prayer across Europe and North America, especially. And in this time, all of a sudden, the deviation decreased. So the data became randomized as, as well. So, I mean, when you see patterns like this, and there's lots of data out there that shows patterns like this, that shows that there's something connecting us, that before that first crash, there was a shift and it continued until there was a shift in the mindset and then it started to go back to random behavior um it's it, it's fascinating when you when you look at studies like that but but then people say okay what what's got that to do with my mercedes with what with my mercedes my mercedes well the thing is we are the, it's back to that we are connected when you with your conscious mind focus on the life you want to live you imprint it on your unconscious and that communicates to the uh, to the superconscious so through that that superconscious is what was being picked up by the those eggs and the the superconscious you send the eggs you send the information out and it starts bringing the resources to you and the thing is you know the, the ironic thing is this happens in everyday life i do strategic All planning time. for organizations what do we do we do not sit down and concretize what you're going to do every day for the next three days you build a three to five year vision you um you concretize your goals for three years for two years for one year which is basically building that vision and and some key steps and then you take and you concretize the first quarter the first three months what action you have you cannot do it for the even the rest of the three quarters because oh, yeah. too much is going to change and once you start moving in that direction stuff starts happening you start uh you know meeting the right people and it's not just corporately this personally think about any goal that you've accomplished once you've become really focused on it what's happened you encounter people you you connect with people that you could never otherwise have done mm -hmm. and one interesting thing martin you mentioned people go well i've tried it, it doesn't work that's feedback what that is saying if this principle works is that you have a stronger program in your unconscious that's keeping you stuck right where you are than what you're putting in so that's yeah. instead of beating yourself up or feeling guilty or feeling bad you go oh that's not failure that's feedback great so now i have to find what that un that unconscious program is dissolve it and exactly and then... there there is a huge thing there's a huge thing it's really uh you cannot fake it that's that's the big that's a big kicker people try to pretend yeah and you cannot pretend okay Either it's you totally or it's not so and and i've i've seen that time and again when people were um I always like to, to compare this, uh, why I, affirmations don't work for so many people. Because I mean, there's a clear structure to affirmations. They say, okay, it has to be in a positive goal, a positive focus, it has to be emotional, it has to be an I, and it has to be in a now. Yeah? Yes, yeah. but... Yeah, and, the, 
that is that is only true for only so long until you don't have an subconscious echo that says otherwise right yeah so if if you say i'm 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 happily earning uh hundred fifty thousand dollars this year and your unconscious what, what is saying you are full of crap exactly you're an idiot you you your dad always said you're a loser and you are a loser so which of the two statements now has the higher emotionality and the higher credibility clearly that's number the two that's 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 the experience of all your life up to now and that's exactly the one that gets affirmed and that's actually exactly the one that gets projected further in the future yeah so an affirmation only really works when you don't have an inner resistance so, and but we are so used to fake it till you make it that we don't pay attention to those internal resistances and you know what affirmations can work but they are it's like going at an iceberg with a toothpick honestly <laughs> it's it's it, you know to stand in front of the mirror and 30 i mean you you look at uh what, what was the Think and Grow Rich, the first book, right? And he stood yeah. in front of the mirror 30 times. He would say, you know, every day in every way I'm getting better. And absolutely, it, you do that over time, it will work, maybe. It's repetition. Maybe, maybe, yeah. But the thing is, it's back to what is that that unconscious pattern that's in you that, that's dominating that, right? And right. So if you're not producing the results, all that says is, okay, you've got something there. It's the way I talk about it, it's like a, we have a GPS in our unconscious mind. There's a default setting of where we need to be. You have to dissolve that D GPS setting to install a new default, which is and your vision. The thing is when something is in your life that you are not happy with, guess what brought you there? exactly that default setting so that you, that you are already primed for that so if you yeah. want to change that you can with good belief conclude that there is some belief setting some habitual thought pattern some conditioning there that keeps you going in that direction and, and as as i just had to experience myself it is not necessarily only from this life and the thing is we're benefiting from it somehow Right. Oh, absolutely. Because you know, th th this is the thing. For a lot of people, they, d they, you know, they say they want this to work, but you know, do you really? Because if this stuff works, guess what? You don't have a freaking excuse for not moving yeah. forward, and that they don't want to have that responsibility. It's much easier to stay stuck. Well, and what is the what is the prime uh, response or uh, responsibility of the reticular activating system or of your subconscious? Let, let's just call it subconscious. It's not to fulfill your wishes. It is to make you survive. And if that means you stay stuck in the same old sh 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 stuff, whatever, <laughs> stuff, stuff, okay, stuff. Uh, as in the last 20 years, then so you will because you learned how to handle that. Well, it's what you know. It's familiar. Exactly. And yeah. nothing is more scary than the unfamiliar happiness. And, and what if I get it and then somebody takes it away from me again? Oh, right. no. Which says that yeah. you're not really believing this anyhow because it's not. Now, here's something. I've, I, I got to say this. It's, it's, it's what I call – this is my biggest challenge with uh, a lot of people who profess to follow the law of attraction, right? And it's what I call the new age cop out. And what, what, what it is, is they've tried to do it and, you know, they, they get some results or it's hit or miss. And, you know, a lot of people um, want more money and they, they create the vision and they don't get it. They don't get the abundance and all. And then what they say is, oh, but that's okay. Money isn't everything. I have an abundant life. I have abundant French. BS. You know, you cannot be a little bit abundant any more than you're a little bit pregnant. Own your freaking results. If you're not getting it, then you are putting out something that's blocking it. If you really believe this, be willing to do the work. And it takes work to go in and say, what is it in me that's keeping me stuck? Yeah. And that is exactly the, the, um, you know, I've just recently discovered a pattern uh, in in my own life that that was that was, you know, like for me, everything's working out. It's it's like it's almost magical. 
But um, for some reason, it's quite often it's working out last minute. You know, so I had a, a, a visit now with a, with a dear friend of mine, Tapas Fleming in, in California, who he created this TAT method. And I thought, okay, let's have a look at this because this is funny in a way. And so I said, okay, well, you know, it's like, I'd, I'd more like to be like three, uh, three meters away from the cliff rather than right at the cliff. Uh, so what, what's there? And we found actually some old patterns, some really old patterns of, of past vows in past lives and stuff. I mean, you may not believe in this or not, I don't care. Um, but which came clearly through that, okay, uh, that's where this comes from. Can I just say something? Yeah. You may not believe sure. in it. It does not matter whether it's real or not. The fact is if working through it changes the results in your life, that's a scientific method. If you can do this work and it shifts your behavior, it's irrelevant whether it's real or not. I totally agree. I totally agree. And that is give it the benefit of the doubt. And, but the, the problem that many people have, I think, is you cannot rationalize your way through. You have to go all in. And the, that you, means with, with gut and with heart and with brain, all three together. You have to really go into the emotional setting. With trust. And you've got to trust, let go trust, of control. That's the toughest thing. Letting go of control. All those belong there. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I think we have to do another one on this because we're really right. Yeah, I think we are coming along on, on time. So again, folks, I uh, it's, this has been amazing. Time has absolutely flown. So uh, would love to still see any comments, questions you have. If you want to uh, connect with Martin, this is his uh, his website on uh, the the, and then you can just click for the English there. Correct uh, for those who. Are uh, we're yeah. still working on the English. We had some laybacks there, but anyway. Yeah, really you can correct with Martin there. And also on Facebook, you just follow the, the link to him. And for me, I'll just uh, give you my uh, the, the Facebook page for the Metia, which is um, probably easy for you to click to here. Uh, it's uh, that's the easiest way to get a hold of this. And that's where you're going to see a lot of these things, plus a whole lot more resources posted. So uh, thank you again, Martin. This was amazing. Like this time just flew by. It's like, holy it, cow. Absolutely. And we, we really should do one covering of like what people actually can do practically. Yeah. Um, what, are, what are some sort of actual practice steps that they can take and which have made a major difference in my life? And I suppose you also have some that have worked for you. Totally agree. I mean, uh, well, I, I know we've got one scheduled for a couple of weeks and we've got a topic for that, but maybe after. We'll say, you know, how do you actually make this stuff work and uh, build up your trust in that? So thank you all for uh, coming aboard and, and joining us. We really, uh, really, really appreciate it. You and we'll be back. I believe it's in a couple of weeks. I'll post that in, in a week or so to, to move up. And thanks for joining us. We had a technical glitch where, where the system booted us out. At but the uh, you guys found us. So... We will, uh, you guys have an amazing rest of the week. Martin, you have a great week. Thank you. You too. Looking forward to the next one. All right. Me too.